The Indian subcontinent, a land of ancient civilizations and vibrant cultures, was tragically divided by the partition of British India in 1947. This event gave birth to two nations, India and Pakistan, but also sowed the seeds of a bitter rivalry. Three major wars and numerous smaller conflicts have deepened the mistrust and animosity. The territorial dispute over Kashmir remains a major flashpoint. The partition led to one of the largest mass migrations in human history, accompanied by widespread violence. Millions were displaced, their lives torn apart by chaos and brutality. This shared history of pain has left an indelible mark on both nations. Despite attempts at diplomacy, the core issues remain unresolved. Both countries view each other with suspicion, perpetuating a cycle of hostility. The international community has a role in encouraging dialogue and peaceful resolution. The consequences of another war would be catastrophic, not just for the two countries but for the entire region. It is imperative for both India and Pakistan to recognize that peace lies in dialogue and cooperation. India, with its larger population and economy, boasts a significantly larger army than Pakistan. The Indian Army stands as one of the world's largest, with over 1.2 million active personnel. In contrast, the Pakistan Army, with 650,000 active personnel is known for its discipline and combat experience. The Indian Army is equipped with a mix of domestically produced and imported weapon systems. Pakistan has focused on developing a leaner, more agile force. Despite its size advantage, the Indian Army faces challenges in terms of terrain and logistics. Pakistan, with its shorter borders, enjoys a degree of geographic advantage. The Pakistan Army benefits from a more unified command structure and operational cohesion. It also possesses a strong network of paramilitary forces and irregular militias. These forces can pose a significant challenge to Indian forces. Air power plays a crucial role in modern warfare and both India and Pakistan have invested heavily in their air forces. The Indian Air Force, IAF, enjoys a quantitative and qualitative edge over its Pakistani counterpart. The IAF operates a diverse range of fighter jets, including Sukhoi Su-30 MKIs, Mirage 2000s, and Tejas light combat aircraft. The Pakistan Air Force, PAF, while smaller, is regarded as a professional and capable force. The backbone of the PAF is its fleet of F-16 Fighting Falcons and JF-17 Thunderjets. Both the IAF and the PAF are continuously modernizing their fleets. The IAF is inducting Rafale fighter jets, enhancing its air superiority. The PAF focuses on upgrading its existing fleet and acquiring new aircraft. Factors such as pilot training and maintenance capabilities play a crucial role in determining the effectiveness of an air force. While the primary focus of the India-Pakistan rivalry remains on the land border, both countries recognize the importance of naval power. The Indian Navy, larger and more capable, plays a dominant role in the Indian Ocean region. The Indian Navy operates a blue water fleet capable of projecting power far beyond its shores. The Pakistan Navy, while smaller, has adopted a strategy of sea denial. It operates a mix of surface combatants, submarines, and maritime patrol aircraft. India's naval modernization program focuses on acquiring nuclear-powered submarines and developing indigenous aircraft carriers. The Pakistan Navy focuses on acquiring more cost-effective platforms, such as diesel-electric submarines. The geography of the Arabian Sea favors the use of submarines and anti-ship missiles. In the ongoing arms race, it's not just about numbers but also about acquiring advanced military technologies. Both nations are investing in modernizing their armed forces. India has made notable strides in developing indigenous missiles and space systems. Pakistan's missile program has developed significant capabilities with ballistic missiles. Both nations are investing in drone technology. India has developed a range of unmanned aerial vehicles. Pakistan is enhancing its drone capabilities with Chinese assistance. The cyber domain has emerged as a new arena of competition. The India-Pakistan rivalry escalated in 1998 when both countries demonstrated their nuclear weapons capabilities. This development introduced a dangerous element into their relationship. Both countries maintain a nuclear triad capable of delivering nuclear warheads. India's nuclear doctrine is based on no first use. Pakistan's nuclear doctrine is more ambiguous, reserving the right to use nuclear weapons first. The nuclear capabilities of both nations have introduced a precarious balance of terror. The risk of miscalculation or unauthorized use of nuclear weapons remains a major concern. 
the international community plays a crucial role in promoting nuclear risk reduction measures. Strategic alliances are pivotal in shaping the balance of power in South Asia. India and Pakistan have sought alliances with external powers to bolster their security. India has fostered close ties with Russia, a major supplier of military hardware. Pakistan has developed a close relationship with China, its all-weather friend. The China-Pakistan Economic Corridor has strengthened their strategic ties. The United States maintains a strategic partnership with India and has had a long-standing relationship with Pakistan. Relations between the United States and Pakistan have become strained in recent years. India is strengthening its ties with the United States, Japan, and Australia under the Quadrilateral Security Dialogue Quad. These evolving alliances reflect the complex web of relationships and rivalries in South Asia. Geography plays a significant role in shaping the military strategies of India and Pakistan. The disputed region of Kashmir poses significant challenges for conventional military operations. The Siachen Glacier has been a point of contention for decades. Pakistan's geographical advantage lies in its control of the higher ground in Kashmir. India faces the challenge of operating in mountainous terrain. The Indus River forms a natural barrier, making it difficult for Indian forces to launch a deep thrust into Pakistani territory. The maritime domain presents unique geographical challenges and opportunities. The Makran coast provides potential sanctuary for submarines and small boats. The international community's response would play a crucial role in shaping the conflict's trajectory. India has emerged as a key player on the global stage with its growing economic and military might. Pakistan has traditionally enjoyed close ties with China and some Middle Eastern countries. The international community's response would likely be shaped by several factors, including the perceived aggressor and the potential for nuclear escalation. The United Nations Security Council would likely play a key role in mediating a ceasefire. The United States would also play a significant role in shaping the international community's response. The potential for international intervention remains low due to the nuclear capabilities of both countries. Any international involvement is likely to be limited to diplomatic efforts to de-escalate the conflict. The possibility of another conflict cannot be ruled out. Several scenarios could trigger a limited conflict between the two countries. One scenario is a terrorist attack on Indian soil, attributed to Pakistan-based terrorist groups. Another scenario is an escalation along the line of control, LOC, in Kashmir. A third scenario involves a crisis in Afghanistan that spills over into Pakistan. The interconnectedness of security challenges in South Asia means that a crisis in one country can quickly escalate into a regional conflagration. The risk of miscalculation and unintended escalation remains high. Both countries must exercise restraint to prevent another conflict. The India-Pakistan rivalry remains one of the most dangerous conflicts in the world. The military balance of power is complicated by Pakistan's nuclear arsenal and its close ties with China. The risk of miscalculation or terrorist attacks triggering a conflict remains a constant threat. Both countries have a shared interest in avoiding another devastating war. The economic and human costs of a conflict would be catastrophic. It is imperative for both countries to pursue dialogue and conflict resolution mechanisms. The international community has a crucial role in encouraging dialogue and promoting regional cooperation. A lasting solution can only come from within, through a willingness to address the root causes of the conflict.